Hello everyone, welcome to the channel of AlgoCamp. So now on this particular channel, we are actually releasing a series on data structures and algorithms where we are going to talk about some of the most important data structures and algorithmic topics which are extremely, extremely important for your upcoming software engineering interviews. Apart from that, these are some of the, uh, I would say, topics that are very, very helpful in your day-to-day -day engineering job as well. We have already released a couple of series around searching, right? And we got a really good response on that. And from here, we are going to put really some awesome content around DSA. In most of these lectures, we will try to ensure that we focus on the intuition building aspect of the things that how you are able to think about something, what are some of the things that people actually neglect but are going to clear some of the really important fundamentals. We are going to see coding implementation, but trust me, my focus is not going to be on the language delivery aspect of the things that, okay, you have to code this in C++ or Java. A lot of problems we have coded in multiple languages. Maybe some of the problems will be in C++, some will be only in JavaScript. I believe if you are somebody who is preparing for an interview, language in 2025 should not be a constraint because most of the people can actually use ChatGPT to do language conversions. So my motive here is to make sure that you understand the concept in depth. You actually see how exactly somebody might have thought about the problem when they were carving out the problem, what can be some initial thought process, how you can actually drive yourself towards the solution. I believe these are going to be some really important videos that will be really helpful for your upcoming career. So do let us know what is your feedback. Um, we are going to release a lot of more topics. Do let us know what all topics you want to have first, right? And uh, the feedback is going to be important. Also, in case you are actually thinking to level up, you want to learn things with respect to low level design, high level design, overall system design for interviews, or you are somebody who wants to do project development in Spring Boot, you want to learn advanced Spring Boot concepts, or let's say advanced Node.js concepts, then we have a lot of courses, live courses running on algocamp.io. So you can check out the website courses.algocamp.io slash learn. And there are a lot of courses that are actually listed. A lot of great discounts are actually going on all, all the courses as well. Do check them out for each and every single course. We are going to add you to a dedicated Discord community where you can get your doubts resolved as well. All of the courses we have made sure that we talk about things from the very beginner to the very advanced level that is going to help you level up in your career as a software engineer. So that being said, let's start the video without any further delay. Now, previously, whatever we discussed in quick select algorithm, that was a randomized algorithm, right? This quick select algorithm was a randomized algorithm. How about you try to modify your quick select algorithm such that you are not picking the pivot ele element randomly, but let's say you are deterministically manually picking something properly. So just think about it. If you have an array and you, have, you want to somehow modify your array such that based on a pivot element, everything to the left of pivot is less than pivot, everything greater than pivot is to the right of the pivot. What is the most suitable pivot? We have already discussed. In uh, quicksort also, we discussed that the most suitable, the best possible pivot that you might have got or you might, might get is what? It is actually the median, right? The median element is actually the best pivot that you can actually get, right? This is something that you need to make sure that you have in your mind, right? Okay. Now, technically, what you can do is, there is an algorithm called as the BFPRT algorithm. BFPRT actually stands for five scientist names, Bloom, Floyd, Pratt, Rivest, Tarjan. These five scientists together formed an algorithm called as a BFPRT algorithm, right? And in this BFPRT algorithm, actually you are able to identify your median very easily and using your median, you try to divide your array into two parts and then try to apply quick select accordingly, right? So first of all, let's try to understand how do you... So before we start this particular video, I wanted to actually talk about a very small thing. So this video is going to actually help you understand a real system design interview scenario. We are going to try to mimic a 45 to 60 minute kind of like a round where we are going to solve a problem very similar to how you will solve a similar system design problem in this short time frame. Now, of course, when you work as a software engineer in a company, 
you have relatively larger amount of time and you can do a lot of more deep dives in even very small level features. But in an interview, the temperament is different, the approach is different. And a similar scenario is actually explained in this particular video. So do consume the content based on that. Also, if you want to see more deep dives and want to understand these topics in a much more deeper level concepts, then do check out the link in the description section below for our system design 2.0 cohort where we have talked about a lot more concepts in a lot more detail which will make you definitely a better software engineer. So let's just start the video. Calculate medians. So this technique is also called as median of medians. Median of medians. What is median of medians? Let's think about it. So what, what actually happens is Whatever is your given array, whatever is your given array, you divide your array into blocks of size 5. You divide your array into blocks of size 5. Okay. Let's say every column represents a block of size 5. Okay, so block of size 5 means there are 5 elements here, there are 5 elements here, 5 elements here, 5 elements here, 5 elements here and so on. Now because you have 5 elements only, now because you have 5 elements only, if I want you to find median of just 5 elements, let's say there are 5 elements like 9, 1, 3, 10, 2. If I want you to find the median of the 5 elements, it's going to be a very easy task, right? Just sort this 5 length array with any sorting algorithm because it's so small. 5 length is so small that it doesn't bother us. Sort this 5 length array, this will become 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 9, 10. Median will be 3, right? So, this block is of size 5. Apply any sorting algorithm on this block of size 5. Apply any sorting algorithm on the block of size 5. And do the same thing for all the blocks, right? Do the same thing for all the blocks. Apply any sorting algorithms on all the blocks. Based on that, once you have sorted, then technically you will be able to get median of each block, right? You will be able to get median of each block such that everything less than median is above the median or to the left of median. Everything greater than medium is to the right of the median, right? Now you have found your median, right? Now you have found your median for each block. You have found the median for each block. Okay. Now what this median of medians says that as the name suggests, once you have found median of each block, then what you are going to do? You are going to recursively find median of these medians that you have extracted out. So for example, this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G are the medians of each individual blocks. Once you have found the medians of each individual blocks, now you are going to actually calculate median of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Again, you are going to divide them into block of size 5, sort them, get the middle element. And slowly and steadily, one by one, again and again, when you will be applying median of medians, at last, your overall size of the array will reduce to 1 and that will be your final median element. Right. So this technique is also called as median of medians, right? Using this technique, you will be able to calculate the medians in quite some efficient time complexity. We'll discuss the time complexity, but the overall approach says that divide your data into blocks of size five, sort each individual block. The middle element of the block is going to be your median of the block. Then whatever medians you have received for each individual bucket or each individual block, recursively go and apply the same median of medians algorithm on these medians. At last, when the size will reduce to one, you will be having your median with yourself. So what is happening here is, let's say that you have the given array, you divide your array into blocks of size five, individually sort the block. Now sorting individual block of size five is a constant time operation. And you got your medians of each block. Then you recursively go in these medians array. Now you will collect these medians, right? And recursively 
try to again apply the same algorithm okay so if i cut this diagram from here copy cool so now let's say that let's say that this element x is your median somehow somewhat again and again by applying median of medians you found that this element x is your median and this x you are going to use as the pivot the pivot that i was talking about this median this median you are going to use as the pivot okay so if median you are going to use as the pivot then technically you are going to redistribute your array based on the median and some part of the median is going to be accepted because that's where the kth element will lie some part is going to be rejected now let's just think about it what will be the time complexity first of all you will require n operations to make all of these arrangements right array of length n divide them into blocks of size 5 and sort individual blocks this is approximately going to take n time only because you will make partitions of size 5 individually sort the partitions that's of length that's a constant time operation right so overall it will take order of n time because n time is required to make the partition plus constant time to constant time to sort each partition and total number of partitions are going to be n by 5 so approximately you take n operations for making this arrangement then you are going to recursively go because after these arrangements are made you got median of each block median of each block now how many elements are these if there were total n elements these are n by 5 elements right n by 5 total elements as median of each block right these will be n by 5 elements so we are going to recursively go and apply the same quick select algorithm on the n by 5 elements so i would say n by 5 because i need to find the median here then in these n by 5 you will make a blocks of size 5 and then again try to find the median and so on once you have found the median then we will say that there will be some elements less than the median some elements greater than or equal to medium right okay now let's see how many elements are less than median can i say all of these elements are less than the median the elements these two two elements above these elements are lesser than because these are medians of the previous blocks right and if these elements are lesser than the medians these are also lesser than x can i say this region is also less than x right okay now what other elements are going to be less than x can i say for example this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 now can i say these regions can these elements can also be less than x they might not be less than x for example this is let's say 40 50 and x is 18 this might not be less than x but may, this may be less than x also right so we have to consider the worst case in the worst case these elements can also be less than x okay these elements though are definitely less than x okay and in fact these set of elements can also be less than x for example you have something like 20 30 40 50 60 and then you have something like 21 22 45 90 and so on so you can see these two elements are also less than 40 right so i can say that these set of elements can also be less than x right so let me show you an example so on wikipedia there is a cool example that you can also visualize right so if you will search for median of medians you will get a cool wikipedia article you can spend some time to read it otherwise most of the things i have already discussed right so you can see something like this you have divided your whole data set into blocks of size n you have sorted each individual block you have sorted each individual block and let's say 47 is your median now we have to consider maximum how many elements can be less than 47 of course 21 and 27 which are just above 47 are less than 47 which i have also denoted here these two elements are definitely less than the median then 
everything on the left side here everything on the left side here and everything on the left side is definitely less than the median that is this part and in fact some elements 22 45 38 41 some below elements are also less than the median they can also be less than the median these below elements some elements can also be less than the median so in the first case maybe all of the elements are less than the median then some elements on this side also will be less than the median that also i have considered that in the first case all of these elements can also be less than the median but nothing on the right side here or anything below it is going to be less than the median right so we are going to leave this much part so what i'm trying to say is i'm trying to figure out how many elements in the worst case can be less than the median right that's what i'm actually trying to identify so if you overall take that how many elements are less than the median then if you calculate this is what this is technically half of the array this is half of the array right this is n by 2 length of the array and then in this remaining half in this remaining half i am only taking what 2 by 5th of the elements because 3 by 5th of the elements are not less than median so in the remaining half i am just taking 2 by 5th of the array that is n by 2 plus n by 5 so this is n by 2 plus n by 5 which is equals to what 7 n by 10 so we can say that approximately there will be in the worst possible case 7 n by 10 elements which will be less than the median now either you will go to the left less than the median or you will go to the right of the median i'm going to consider the worst case that every time you will go to the bigger part that is t of 7 n by 10 so n time required to make blocks and sort individual blocks t of n by 5 time required to go recursively and calculate the median right and then t of 7 n by 10 time will be required to apply quick select recursively on the bigger part now what we can do is we can try to prove that to prove that t of n is less than or equal to some constant into n that if you apply this median of medians algorithm then also the time complexity will be order of n so if you apply this t of n is less than or equal to n plus if t of n we want to prove is less than c of n then t of n by 5 is going to be less than or equal to what c n by 5 plus c 7 n by 10 you can take n common 1 plus c into 9 by 10 t of n now just think about it 9 by 10 is less than one value right so this is approximately negligible one is approximately negligible in term in front of n so i can say t of n is less than or equal to some constant into n that means t of n is order of n so even if you use the median of medians algorithm in order to find the pivot and then go on one side of the pivot and don't go on the other side of the pivot the time complexity is still going to be order of n so you can use the randomized approach that we discussed previously in order to detect the pivot randomly or you can use this bfprt algorithm that is also called as median of medians in order to deterministically find a pivot and then based on that pivot divide your array onto two parts and go to one of the parts where your k will lie of course if you go to the smaller part the complexity is going to be lesser than n right here we went to the bigger part and we are considering we will always go to the bigger part that's the worst case that we are considering but in case you go to the smaller part then definitely the complexity will be even lesser but we always see the worst possible case and in the worst possible case the time complexity is going to be order of n i hope this point is making sense to everyone